Hello. Got an update. Found out why this Kia was in core part. Runs and drives nice. Had it taken over, pulled it off my truck, things like that. Seemed to drive all right. Until I took it for a run around the block. No power whatsoever. And then after a while, started trucking out blue smoke. Which normally means one thing. Turbo's knackered. We're going to suss that out today. We're going to find out. And obviously, as you can see, it's where the Vauxhall Lastro was. Which has since been moved over there because it's getting picked up. I'm trading it out. I just don't have time to mess around with it. I've got too much on it at the minute. So, we'll get into this and confirm it's the turbo. Now then, this is the 1.6 diesel engine from Kia. I have to apologise to start off with. It's a bit windy today, so there might be a bit of wind noise. I am just using my phone for the time being just to see how this whole YouTube thing's going. Easy enough to get to the turbo. Take this top cover off, tilled in by a couple of bolts. And then this air pipe here, you got a nice big jubilee there, and there'll be one down under the turbo. I can get them off, and we'll confirm as to what I'm 99% certain will be a knacker turbo. But I need to get the part numbers off it as well, just to make sure we get the right one. Right, as if by magic, engine covers off. Air pipes off. You have to forgive the dirty hands. I do usually wear gloves, but I've run out. Turbos are quite easy to diagnose. Obviously, one, no power. Two, blue smoke, which means it's burning oil. Also, a lot of oil in that pipe as well. And when I took this pipe off, a little nut fell out. It's gone down into the depth. Never a good sign. Now, here's our turbo. Got the hot side, the cold side. Now, if I stick my finger in here, a little bit of oil, not too excessive. If you put your finger on the shaft, there is a load of movement in that. A load of movement, which confirms it. The nut would have been what holds the impeller in place, which is gone, which isn't much good to anybody. So, it's a shame. It was a core part for a reason. Now, oh, look at all that oil. I need to try and find some part numbers. Right, I'm going to show you what I mean with this turbo. I'm going to show you inside it. Now, that little shaft there. Is where my nut would have come off. Now, I can imagine there would be cowboys out there that would try and dig out that nut and try and put it back on and tighten it up. But the damage is already done, it wouldn't last five minutes. As you can see, there's damage to the, the blades of the impeller. And you can see there is oil all over the place. Now, I learnt my trade as a mechanic. Worked for over 10 years in numerous garages, main dealers, small garages, and things like that. 
so I will be doing this myself really because of the the age of mileage if you were paying somebody to do it it wouldn't really be that justifiable it's probably is normally would end up being a car that will get scrapped or sold one for parts but I'm in it now and I won't be able to get out of it as it is without losing money so I just made my mind up I'm going to buy a second hand turbo I'm going to apply for the logbook and I'm going to sell it because in all honesty if it wasn't for the turbo, it'd be a nice car. I will have to be cautious because there is a lot of oil about. I can't rev it too much in case it takes off on its own oil. Now, also, when I fit the new turbo, I'm going to have to be cautious because it could do the same thing. Normal circumstances. I would say this is thing scrap. I will would not advise anybody to put a brand new turbo on it. Because for one, five hundred pounds. Two, you have a tired turbo, which is worn to the same sort of rates as the engine. I have known people have cars with tired old engines, put a brand new turbo on. And the turbo is just way too strong for the engine and it's killed the engine at this sort of age and mileage i would always advise to put a second hand turbo on just because it's risky if you have something that is i wouldn't say it's worn out and tired but it's 157,000 miles on that turbo has been with that car since new i would assume so it's worn at the same rate as the engine if you get a worn engine a brand new turbo it'll just it could just be too much for that engine and it'll potentially kill it it could be fine I'm not saying that but if I buy a second hand turbo they're around 100 to 150 pounds if I get one that is off a car that has done 80,000 miles, you're still looking out. Yeah, it's not as worn out as the rest of the engine or anything like that. But you don't need to worry about one, a bedding in process. Normally you put a new turbo on, you do loads of other little jobs to make it right. Like new oil feed pipe, oil return pipe, you do an oil filter change things like that I will do an oil filter on this because it keeps the job right but it's yeah you're then going to have a turbo that basically is worn worn in so you don't have to worry about bedding it in driving it too carefully well, you'd obviously take it cautious at the start but yeah, that's why this one was a curve part. Now, obviously, as you can see, I don't have any fancy equipment for doing stuff like this. All I have is a driveway. I have a jack, axle stands, and some drive up ramps. It's about as fancy as I get round here. The fanciest thing I probably have is my tools. Being a form, formerly a mechanic in the trade, built with my tools over the 10 year period that I was working as a mechanic. So it's about as fancy as it gets around here. Even a more walkie torch, because you know, when you're employed, you have money to burn. I don't these days but yeah one turbo kaput 
Right, what I've done is, I've stripped it down a bit more. It was a heat shield on top, which I've took off. It came off really easy, actually, which is unusual. Hopefully it's a sign of things to come. And then I have my WD-40 in, and I've sprayed all my nuts, all the threads, everything that I'm going to be taking off, just so it can soak nicely while I hunt around on, on Tinterweb web and find myself a turbo. I have found one, it's £150. Uh, you did have an option to make an offer. I have made an offer. I'm going to try and get it a bit cheaper because ideally I want to get it as, as cheap as I can. Obviously, the more money I save, the more money I make. Uh, I'm going to get some new gaskets for it for the exhaust side and things like that and you get an oil filter for it <laughs> ideally I don't want to spend more than £200 on this which was £150 for the turbo and there were some gaskets on eBay £20 the oil and filter normally I tend to get I tend to be spending 35 to 40 pounds on an oil and filter that obviously takes me over 200 pounds hence I want to try and save on the turbo if I can I'm kind of hoping that my thoughts of not many people are going to be wanting one so they will be quite happily take £130 for it. Now, I'm trying to save money, they're trying to make money. I can see them coming up a bit. But, we will see. One time will tell. Right. Looks like we're leaving the key here, as it is for now. It just needs... I need, I can't take it apart too much because obviously it's at the end of my drive. I need to move stuff about. It's still moving, movable the way it is. I just don't want to be revving it because that'll do more harm than good. So, we'll leave it here for now and I'll just crack on. I've got plenty to do. On to the next one for now. Yeah, I thought I'd end this video. I'll show you around the Astra that I'm trading out. Should be getting picked up today. It's a shame, really, because I was half tempted to put it right and sell it on, make a bit more money out of it. In terms of the whole deal itself, I'm not making a lot out of it, but. I am making something. Got to earn a wage at the end of the day. Obviously, I spoke about the number plate. You can see somebody's done a bit of a repair once tidying up a little bit there. The bumper. Let's fasten it a bit better. For a car like this. You wouldn't. You, know, you can't paint and things like that. It is what it is. But all in all, apart from that, you got your it's cable scratches and things like that. A little mark there. The usual scrapes on the wall, which looks like somebody's tried to try to bodge up themselves. It's got a bumper that tries to uppercut you. My assumption is it's got the wrong boot struts. That would be my assumption. But you know, I took this in part exchange against a 2006 Vauxhall Tigre that I had tested. I did advisory free MOT. And I serviced it as well. 
Yeah, didn't do too bad. A bit of lack of peel there. Dents and dings here of where somebody just swung the door open and bashed it into something. Inside. It's not too bad. It's not even that dirty. Hmm. It's a three door Astra petrol. Tiny bit of wear on the bolster. And you wouldn't cry on about that. Vents are broken. Oh, yeah. You can move it with your fingers. <laughs> but to replace that, you have to replace this whole fascia panel here. Which means you probably have to take the radio out, take this control panel out, possibly this bit of trim on here. Again, you just I'm trying to stick a test on it and sell it on. It'd do somebody. <laughs> Turn that off. Oh, it's in range refuel. No miles on it. The light's not flashing. Every Vauxhall that you tend to get in never has petrol in it or diesel. That fuel light always flashes because for some reason maybe we drive Vauxhalls. They tend to just not care about cars unless they've got like a VXR or something like that. And it's got electric windows in the front. Steering wheel controls for the stereo. Doesn't have cruise control, front and rear fogs, no echo lights. It's got aircon, which would have me absolutely astounded if it worked through the washed up vents. I'm definitely going to say that's a no. Like the Kia, I think the Kia was half working. That there is not half working. 127,000 miles on it, which for a petrol, good go, good go. Well, as you can hear, the exhaust is blowing. <laughs> in the world <laughs> it'll be the flexi section um, as I said in the last video they did say they had had an exhaust put on it I'm assuming they had the exhaust put on it poorly but all in all Mm. It was clean ish, rough and bumpy with a leak on it. It's got really any coolant in it. <laughs> and the bottle's a bit monkey. Foot. Wouldn't be the first Astra in the world to have water problems. It has a cat problem, I can tell you that much. Let's have a lay down on the floor and see if we can see this exhaust. Get a trim hole Yeah, that's not new. So either there. Although, it kind of looks like somebody's welded in a flexi. An old flexi. <laughs> well, it looks like they've either 
welded it up. For the life of me, I do not know why, because I'm not talking. Oh, there's money. Yeah. It is what it is. I thought I'd show you around. I'm trading this out for £350. Which, let's be fair, you can't go wrong. If it was offered to me for £350, I'd probably buy it, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's about it for this video really. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Subscribe. Leave a comment. All oh, that shebang. And thanks for watching. See you later.